everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rhapsody Radio. Today, I'm joined by another special guest. This is Kathy. So, Kathy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It is, of course, a pleasure to be here. So, do you want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself before we go into things? Yes. Okay. So, I graduated with the class of 2020. I was in the marching band for four years. I played the flute and I did one season of Winter Guard. Um, I'm a founding member of the Ukulele Club. And yeah, uh, here at Drexel University, now I also do pet band and I do the open mics whenever I can. So music has stayed within the sphere of things and a lot of that's because of the marching band, so. That's really cool. So today we're gonna talk a little bit more about the marching band program. Uh, I have you guys tuned in last week, you know, we talked a little bit about the rehearsal protocol and competitions, but this week we're gonna focus on um, band camp, which we haven't really covered yet. So we're going to delve into that. So of course, you know, Kathy has been in, was in marching band for all four years. So she has a lot of experience with just being in band camp. She knows a lot about it. She knows the whole process. And of course I was in it the whole time too. We know. What yep. it's like. Um, but before I actually jump into that, what made you decide to join the AHS marching band? Well, this is going to sound a little odd, but I became interested in marching band when I was around seven years old because every Memorial Day at my grandparents, I loved the marching band from their high school and I was just enamored with it. And then in middle school, when Hecht came to promote the band, me and my friends were like, oh, this is something we're all gonna do together. Oh, this sounds so much fun. And when he showed us the Chrono Variations video, which was the 2015 competition program, enamored, fell in love, could not wait to start. And so the rest is history. I mean, I went to the intro meeting. I was already just like, I got caught up in all the energy. I went to practices and like little by little as they introduced, introduced us to how to march drill and how we were going to be standing just I don't know. I think what really sold me, even though I was already sold, is when I got to put on the uniform for the first time and I'm just like, oh, this is really awesome now. <laughs> so I, my there's a picture of me in my kitchen. And I'm like, add attention to my dad's like, <laughs> it was so hyped. The whole family was hyped. They couldn't wait to see what all of this was about too. So. <laughs> yeah, it was the same way for me. I was so excited when Mr. Heck came to the school, the middle school, to promote the program because that was just how I was introduced to the, the whole marching band and what it was like to just be in marching band because um, at Stonebridge, we marched in the Memorial Day Parade. So we learned basic protocol and commands and such. So it made me more interested in joining. Um, I also wanted to ask you, um, you know, what was the transition into the band program like for you? Transition into it? Well, if you're talking from like middle school concert band to like high school band life, obviously that's a lot different because you go from sit down band to like, which it is a sport. Some people don't like to consider sport. It is a sport. Um, but for me, it was smooth, but it was fast. Like I loved summer practices. Like I very quickly kind of meshed in with um, the flutes with the, with that section. I had friends in multiple other sections as well. So essentially just every week, it was kind of just getting to, you know, go to high school and just kind of fall in love with this, ooh, I'm a high schooler mentality now. And kind of see all these new people and learn this new thing. It was just awesome. And even as the summers progress and it's like, ah, yes, I know how to march now. I know what to expect. For me, that magic never left. It was always kind of like a buzz in the back of my school, just like, oh man, this is something I love so much. Or it's like, oh, we're doing this today. Or, oh, we're learning this set of drills today. Or, oh, Fishkin did it this today. Something <laughs> like that. There was always some little buzz that I was just like, it always kept me hooked. I was always excited. And that sounds very cliche, but it, March Man was very much my thing in high school. So. The band community is great. This, everyone in the program is so dedicated and, and motivated and just loves playing music. And I loved being a part of that so much. Exactly. And I'm sure you feel exactly the same. So let's transition and talk a little bit about Bandcamp, which I'm sure a lot of 
people who are interested in joining the band program have questions about, which hopefully we can address some of those concerns or questions that you may have about that. So yeah. let's first start by going over what is Bandcamp and, and what is the purpose of Bandcamp? Do you want to start off this conversation? Of course. So Bandcamp is essentially what happens at the very end of the summer, like a week or two before actual high school starts for the year. You've had your weekly summer practices, usually going between like two to three hours long. Sometimes sections they come before, stay after. That's very much up to the section leader and like what people decide needs to be done. If there's any extra work that needs to be done before Bandcamp, which Elaine and I, we couldn't quite remember if it was eight to five or eight to six. I'm Somewhere not sure. in that range. Somewhere in that range. So it's a long day and it is essentially, it's band boot camp, but don't let that phrasing scare you because it's where you really start to put together the show. Typically mm -hmm. we get the entire, the entire opener on the field. It's, you know, the bare bones, like this is where you learn how to march, you know, the show. It's not just basics block anymore you're um, kind of starting to get the framework of what your show is going to be. Um, and obviously, like, as the season goes on, things get added to that chunk of show, things get taken out, things will change. But for the first time at the end, because there is a fam from, ugh, family and friends barbecue at the end, you feel, I don't want to say you finally feel like a marching band because that already starts to happen over the course of the week but that's when like you start to look like one because you've got the shirts you're all together and you're on the field and it's like detail attend hut and then you do the show oh man it's it's i remember it was kind of magical the first time even though oh man our first run of uh Dixon was whoo but band camp the, it's a it's a ride but it's I can't say anything about it because even though you're hot and you're sweaty and you're tired, that's where it's where you make all your friends because even at the practices over the summer, it's like, I don't want to say that they're too fast to talk to anyone, but it's like you're typically like in an arc or you're in blocks. So right. you know, we're so focused on what we're doing that there's no time to really talk with other people. Exactly. But, you know, when you're on the field, you know, people end up, you know, whispering or something, despite what Hex and everyone else yells at us to do. Yeah. There will be a little bit of field chatter. And it's like, you know, during the water breaks, you'll end up talking to your section, people in the section next to you. And then there's lunch break. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes um, band parents, they do bring food for you, which is always so good. So yeah. good. And, um, and like in line, you'll talk to people. In the band room, you'll talk to people. And it's really where everything starts to mesh together, the social aspect, I mean. Yeah. yeah. And marching band is very like team based. Like it's not yes. all, it's not all just about one person. It's about working mm -hmm. together to put this show on the field. So there's a lot of time to just work with other people and communicate, even if it's like, you know, there are times where we need to be focused on what we're doing. There oh, is still yeah. plenty of time for that social aspect, especially during band camp, which is just a like a week of growth, I would call it. This yeah. Is where the show develops. This is where you kind of really just come together as a band family. And that's how I love to consider, you know, just the, the organization. It's like a family. It really very much is. Like, I love that feeling. Yeah. That's especially something I'm definitely going to miss next year when I graduate is this band family. But yeah, same here. I, I still keep in contact with the, um, with the seniors who graduated with me. Obviously, I'm still in contact with Elena and lots of other kids who are seniors and juniors this year, which is so odd to think about because like you said, it is very much a family dynamic. Mm -hmm. And you know, these are kids that I I met them at their first intro meeting and they're just like, oh, what is this thing? Why are all of these people yelling and pulling out their phones? <laughs> and now it's like, they're just like, yeah, like I'm trying out for, drum major i'm going out for section leader and i'm just like you were a baby yesterday <laughs> what happened it all goes so fast it does like i met elena when she had purple hair yeah it was, it was like it feels like it was just yesterday but it was it was like pretty much four years ago at this point it's crazy i know oh god oh there's more that i have to talk about later on when it comes to the passage of time 
mm-hmm. in marching band, but we'll get yeah. to that later. We'll yes, get you to have that. to really enjoy the moment and enjoy being in band oh. like you are because before you know it, you'll blink your eyes and it's gone. And I feel like that's something that, you know, you'll hear seniors say, you'll hear the upperclassmen talk about all the time. And you're like, yeah, you know, I don't know if it'll really go that fast. But just does. wait because before you know it, you'll be in their shoes saying the same thing to the incoming class and it's wild so uh, breaks my heart but oh man you yeah. just take my advice when you're not on the field or sometimes even when you're on the field take pictures take videos yes. like these are the memories that like i really hold on to from like my early teen years it is it, it band is always gonna hold a special place in my heart and to this day not gonna lie, if I put on any like DCI performance or anything, whether or not I watched it in the band hallway or not, I just feel a little twinge. Cause you know, it it becomes, I don't wanna say, beca- well, it kind of does become part of you. Cause you're with these people all the time. And it's something that like, at least for me, I actively thought about it a lot. And it was also my escape because even though it's like very mentally involved, I think it's what I like so much about it. Cause it's like, school ends and like you're like messing around with your friends you're doing homework blah 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 but once you're on the field you're on the field there's nowhere else you could be right then you can just put yourself entirely into it and whether that be drill itself just music or like adding in the more characterized aspects of it like some people have solos or there's like certain body like movements that you're gonna have to do like as a group or individually you can just completely put your entire mental capacity towards that and i i needed that a lot mm-hmm. so it was it was very much an outlet as much as it was something that you know i did as a hobby right so. yeah and going back to the whole band camp experience what should someone expect to bring to band camp because it's you know it's a long day you know so there's and it's hot out and yeah. you know the sun is usually burning very hot down on us so yeah what are some things that you would recommend someone bring to band camp water bring more water than you think bring gallon jugs yes the gallon jugs i have mine in my closet so (laughs) bring all the water all the ice because you will drink it do not show up with one of these (laughs) 10 hours sometimes no, that will that, that this will sometimes be one water break. It gets hot depending on how much the universe would like to smite you. Uh-oh. And the gush and goes. Oh, and the gush and goes. Yeah, we have something called gush and go, which is when you're learning maybe a couple new sets on the field, and then one of the staff members says, "Okay, you have time to gush and go," which just means you run off the field. You have about a minute to go drink some water and run yeah. right back to where your and position we, is on the field. And when we say you run, you run. You run. Great. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Oh, where oh, there was something else I wanted to say. I forget. Sunscreen. Sunscreen. Yes. Um oh, cooling towels for your neck. Oh, also different kinds of sunscreen because depending on humidity, depending on skin type, all that. Bring the cream, bring the stick, bring the spray. Um, all of that stuff. Some people bring those, like, um, uh, not the cooling towels, but, like, different, like, lightweight fabrics to, like, guard the backs of your necks, especially sax players, because they've got the strap. You can't get weird tan lines, or it'll rub, and it'll really bother them. I was a flute player, so I only know this from what they told me. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely that snacks, like a granola bar or something, like, I kept, I honestly wasn't really supposed to do this. Sometimes I would, I, I um, kept one in my fanny pack. Bring a fanny pack, by the way. Very good for dot sheets before you get your dot books. Right. Um, uh, they had us do a weird poker chip method of like um, uh, marching from dot to dot. That didn't last for very long, but yeah. honestly, I very much enjoyed having a fanny pack with me. A watch, totally don't still have a watch tan line from <laughs> days. Watches uh, are helpful. Yes, they are. 
However, they can also sometimes be very cruel because it's like, what do you mean? Only 15 minutes passed. But <laughs> that doesn't happen too, too often. Well, maybe you don't want to get a, have a watch so that, you know, you're not watching the clock, you know, since especially most of our focus is on what we're doing. You don't want to yeah. be checking the time all the, the whole while you're there. Yeah. I mean, another method that I always used was there's a, a, a church nearby and every half an hour, the, the bell will chime. Oh, no. So if you learn how to listen to that and tell, oh, it's, that's, you know, it's the, uh, I don't know, 12 o'clock hour right now, or it's 1230 because it'll chime once. That's how I learned to keep time when I was there. Um, but really only because I wanted it to be lunchtime. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, lunch, people, sometimes parents bring it, but other times that Wawa sandwich you've got in the band room, it is just a thing of glory, but who knows. <laughs> uh, but yeah, some people like having watches, some people don't, very much up to you. You'll figure it out when you're there. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's one more thing I want to say. Oh, some, some people like to opt to bring portable chargers, although you're not on your phone very much. Some people do that anyway, just like a weird like mental comfort thing. It's like, oh, I don't want to to go with a battery, you're not going to be on your phone very much um, throughout the course of the day. Mm -hmm. um, you really only need your phone for lunch. Really? Yeah. You know, it's not even like you need it. It's just like a lot of, you know, mental break. Yeah. Or if you want to text home and be like, yep, hey, I'm at, back, I'm at band camp and you want to take pictures. You know? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I had mine for pictures, all of the gross sunscreen pictures, all the ones where you're lying, just They're very right. tired at the end of the day. Trust me, you look, you may think you hate the picture now, but looking back, like, at some of these pictures of just me and my friend just half dead at the end of the day, I'm just like, oh, man, that was such a good day. Like, we did this, we learned so much, it was so much fun, and... Yeah, just well, like I said, take pictures. Just trust me. Definitely. So this brings me to my next question. So during band camp, are there any special events that go on? Uh, well, like I said, um, like sometimes like once or twice a week, like throughout the course of the week, um, parents will cater food. Sometimes they'll make it. Sometimes they'll bring in Chick-fil-A um, or something else like Piazza or something. I think we had Piazza once in my freshman year. Um, so that's kind of like little things to look forward to. And they also bring out popsicles near the end of the day and like other small snacks. Oh, kind yeah. of going. Um, but Especially when it's hot. Yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, but the big event, um, I think I mentioned this a little bit before, is the family and friends show at the very end of the week on Friday. Um, so typically we'll get our show shirts um, on Thursday. Um, I designed the one for my senior year, by the way. Very cool. That's true, um, yeah. Kathy designed our show shirt for uh, the 2019 marching band show. Yes. Oh, man. Just a little tiny tangent. It's, it, it's so cool that everyone from that year kind of has that little piece of my heart to hold on to for my last band season. But anyways, going back to the big event, um, family and friends show slash picnic. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You, It's a um, show first. You get on the field with a whole band, all the guard, everyone in your shirt. So it's like kind of your first taste of like a proper uniformed performance and you show what you learned. There's a little quick demo of like, you know, getting called to attention and like what one step will look what, like, one step in the march will look like. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you're called to attention and you run everything you've learned. And typically when you look back on it in say October, you're like, oh my God, I'm appalled. But in the moment, it's like, that's what you know so far. It's the best feeling and you're able to run through it and like sometimes like little kinks are like found after, you know, you know, you've been sitting down for a minute and like makes it not eventually fresh, you know, you have to review it. But it's so cool because it's your first taste, like I said, of the final performance. And then after that, like I said, it's a it's a party. It's a barbecue. Yeah. Family and friends are there. There is an insane amount of food, all of which is very good. All of us completely yeah. overeat. However, you're burning a lot of calories throughout the course of band camp. Yeah, so after all afraid. of that marching all week. Yeah, someone will typically end up in a tree. I will never forget Matt Vega in his drum harness, jumping out of a tree in the crevice. I think it was like my sophomore year, but every time that 
comes up in my Snapchat memories, I will laugh at that video. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a party and it's great. And it really kind of brings, the, it ties that week up so nicely because you've been working, working, working. And it just really further drives home the whole family aspect of it. Because It's you know, such a wonderful feeling. Yeah. It is. Like, it couldn't end in any better way. Like that's just- Exactly. The, tied like, off up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. it's it's so cool. It's such a fun event. And then, you know, you have a week to rest and then school starts and then you're in the competition season run, which yeah, you're, um, it's, you're perfectly set up for the rest of the band season. You know, you've learned the show and now you're at the point where you're just kind of making little fixes and cleaning it up and preparing for the competitions. And of course, like, you know, putting on the show at the football games, too. But yeah. It's, even though it's a very tiring week and it's a lot of work, it's one week, you get through it, and when you look back, it, it was like time very well spent. And you yeah. learn. Yeah, like like I said, you typically learn um, the entirety of the opener. In my senior year, we also got maybe like a, a quarter slash a third away into the closer as well, but that's mainly because we have solo a soloist and then a small group of flutes and clarinets. So I think that's as far as we ever like, that's like the record, at least as far as I experienced, but typically, like I said, you learn the opener and then the um, ballad and the closer. Mm -hmm. Those are later on as season progresses. Yeah, so I think we've basically covered all we need to about band camp at this point. So we're gonna take the time and transition to talk a little bit about band trips, which is something we haven't brought up yet. So let's get on with that.